Okay, welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the special May Day report with me and Brother Thomas, uh, Brother Thomas, Brother Thomas blog dot blogspot dot com, and uh, uh, everything is there on that site. Uh, we're getting ready to um, lay it out for you. We're going to lay it out for the entire uh, year. Um, actually, you know the uh, the apocalyptic feeling that's going on. I'm sure you share it. Is so far off the charts that it is. Uh, <laughs> it's it's amazing that uh, we're not looking at a post Armageddon kind of world right now, this moment. Uh, but without further ado, let me bring on Brother Thomas. Good morning. Greetings, Earthlings, occupiers of <laughs> Mammon, and <laughs> occupiers of Holy Spirit. Occupiers, huh? Yeah, you got two options right now. Occupy Mammon, Mam Mammon, Occupy Holy Spirit. That's it. Okay. Well, that sounds like the same uh, the same deal we've had before. Uh, you can either be of the world or you can be of the spirit. Uh, but, but it's 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 uh, it's different now. I mean, it, that's always been the case. But uh, we're in all we're here. We've arrived at uh, the time of last resort. Okay. No doubt about it. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, well, I have a, a picture of a, a burned out city. I don't know what city it is. It's on my Facebook page right now that pr was one of the best post-apocalyptic kind of aftermath of, you know, of a nuclear bomb kind of pictures I've seen. And uh, yeah. that's so that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, you know, I did learn something kind of profound over the last couple of weeks, and that is... Um, that the wounds that we have are not in secret, you know, they're not, they're, they're universal. Whatever wounds I have, whatever wounds you have, whatever wounds anyone has, uh, they are ultimately Christ, you know, they are a, they are not uh, peculiar to any of us in a peculiar secret kind of basement torture way, but rather um, they're coming from the same place where Jesus was wounded, hence they become his wounds or they become Christ. And his wounds represent our healing, so his wounds can never heal. Therefore, looking for healing is, is kind of a moot point. The idea more is to see the wound as being a universal. In other words, if you go on this path that we're on, the wounds, you know, and, and you know, the enemy knows you're going to be on this path even if you're three years old, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's already predetermined. And, um, and I, I don't give free will a lot of... Uh, play these days like I used to, you know, it's more like, you know, you are what you are, you know, God makes you what you are. And the enemy knows that. And I think that, you know, the wounds that we get are universal and singular rather than peculiar and strange and, you know, um, shameful and hidden away rather than I think they're, they're, they're universal and out in the open and they do ultimately represent Christ and represent healing. So that changes the whole idea of, well, I'm waiting for my healing. Well, then you wait forever because you're already healed because by his wounds we are healed and our wounds are his, so we are healed. And may the wounds never heal, amen. amen. Something like that is what I've kind of gotten to spiritually. And uh, it's a, um, and you know, there's the sad realization that, you know, some people are just not going to be compatible. You know, it's it's just not going to work out. We can pretend to, get along with each other, do what we have to do to get along with people that we need to get along with to, you know, to, to whatever, to function. But, you know, there's this divide that happens in the spirit and there's just nothing anyone can do. It's nothing personal, but it's not something you can just get over, you know, by being nice or trying to make it work out or trying to, you know, walk on eggshells or trying to make things go right. It's just, it's going to go the way it's going to go. Yeah, it is, and uh, those that are called in the spirit right now uh, have got have got to. Uh, there's not going to be the option of hiding anymore. Everything's uh, being flushed out now, and mm -hmm. uh, the persecution is is well underway, and it was expected. But what is happening in the spirit uh, from everything I've been shown lately what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing. I mean, real mi miraculous uh, stuff. What the what the Holy Spirit is doing right now to call to His people 
and uh, give them the power and the capacity to make it through this, these times that are coming up. Uh, it's the only way that people are going to have any kind of uh, sanity left, any kind of wholeness and peace. When, and there will be peace going through these storms, but um, the, the Spirit's moving right now. Uh, big big things are in the offing, and uh, there's no more. I mean, we've said this before. It's been going on for centuries, but uh, I'd say like never before, there's no more fence-sitting uh, for people that are uh, uncommitted to the Lord. Uh, it's It's got to happen right now, and there there is a surge of power in the Spirit to to affect that transformation. And then, as you were saying, uh, where a lot of people get hung up is obsessing on the old man, on old sins, on old old problems they've had. You, you don't... Don't let that old man get back up out of the grave. He keeps popping <laughs> back up, and uh, you turn yeah. away from it. You're already healed. You're already forgiven. Yeah. And going forward, you've got to look just right into the face of the Holy Spirit and stop looking back because the, the forces, the events that are happening on the ground, are if you're, if you're wavering, you're going to get pulled right into that undertow. And, uh, I mean, we're here. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing to watch unfold in real time. Well, you're seeing, you know, open communism on the streets. The open open communist, um, you know, which I don't call radicalism. I call it conformity. <laughs> you know, communism is really conforming. But you see the violent communism in the form of the Muslim Brotherhood, in the form of radical Islam, in the form of uh, liberalism today, in the form of... Um, uh, you know, it, it, the, the whole political debate right now is, which I never thought we'd get to, is whether or not we're going to wind up with uh, uh, more communists in, in Congress than we have um, capitalists. In other words, that it's gotten to the point now where there's so many communists that have infiltrated that uh, Alan West was pointing out um, that it's like 80 or something and, and, and growing. And uh, th- that it's a debate right now and, and that Obama has now coined a slogan that he calls forward, yeah, which has been the old line communist slogan system. for, for s- <laughs> as long as communism has been going. They have had magazines called forward. Forward yeah. is the is it's the slogan of traditional Marxism, of European Marxism and uh, Soviet yeah. Marxism forward. It's right out in the open. He is what he is. He's an open communist. And, and yeah, you know, yeah, there's only one thing. More open. You can't. It need, it's going to go to blood. It's just got to. That's what, where it's got to go. But what about this military? You know, wh- why haven't they rebelled against the illegality of it? Well, and some of them have, uh, and we, uh, we don't know about it. Uh, there's people disappearing and dying far, far too unnaturally and too soon. So there's a purge going on, and a lot of it, of course, isn't uh, hitting the news. Because there, there are. Uh, I just heard something from someone who has military ties, and they, they are saying right now that. Um, there's some new, uh, the, the new training operations are all, and have been for a while now, but it's intensifying. They're all centered around urban right. warfare, breaking yeah. down doors, neighbors, you know, households. Uh, uh, they call it what, black bagging people, where they bust in, yeah. and put you in a bag, and haul you off. That's all they're training for. And supposedly the war on terror is over, I think it was announced just a little. So what? Right. It's What's the, with all the <laughs> it's the war on ramping up. right it's the war on the people now and yeah. uh, and that's basically it it's the war on on domestic enemies which are anyone that doesn't conform to communism and bow down to Obama as the messiah is now the enemy well what, and what I this person told me was that a lot of uh, his friends are are saying right now they're gonna, they're trying to retire early they're trying to get out because they are expecting orders and it sounds like they may even know of orders that are coming that they will not 
obey, that they do not want to have to uh, implement. And so a lot of them are trying to get Well, there's out only one order to obey. One. The only order to obey is freedom and the principles of the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. That's the only order they need to obey right now. And I won't even go into what that... Now that's the enemy. I mean, I could probably be put on a list just for saying that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for saying that, you know, uh, to defend the law of the land. Right. That's right now, that's the enemy. You can't have it that way. And people who stay in the military, they're good for nothing scumbags. So, anyway. <laughs> well, it's, it, you know, we started uh, Mayday Show in 2006. <laughs> and now, you know, at that point, it, people still thought communism was dead and that we wouldn't be dealing with that. And look at where we're at in six years where now it's open. I mean, it's just out in the open right. and being promoted as a, as a viable, uh, cherished alternative. NBC, to, you know, CBS and the big, the big stations are all promoting communism as the alternative. As the, and they all were, you know, kind of playing nod, nod, wink, wink with Obamacare, all knowing it was communism. Mm-hmm. And 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 now it, it you know I don't know I just can't watch anymore. The people here are so stupid. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> this is the stupidest nation or the most stupidest people that ever lived. And maybe in a way because of their ignorance, like Jesus said, my people perish due to you know ignorance. And and of course I'm frustrated, you know. And that's what you're hearing in my voice right now. But because I've been listening to this over and over, I've gotten to the point where if I have the TV on for a little while. <laughs> I just start screaming at it. Yeah, I, when we have the TV on, I, more noise and uh, talking coming from us in the room and me talking back to the TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually talk. That you can't hear the TV. No, I actually talk to the TV now. I say, like, you get somebody on there like Obama talks, and all I do is talk over him the whole time. I don't want to hear one word he has to say because I already know what he's going to say because he's a broken record. And, 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 and everyone like that. And Leslie Stahl talking to the, this, this, on 60 Minutes to this guy that, yeah. that basically we had to you know, waterboard these people to get information out of them and acting like we're torturing them by giving them insure or by pouring water on them. It's somehow inhumane or, you know, I just, I can't take it anymore. I really can't. I can't take this double standard sort of pussification of, of you know, America and the, the ultimate final... Um, gelding of all males, for you know all males, and and the gelding of the Constitution and and the gelding of of all of it, and you know you have to be some gutless, sniveling, boot licking wimp in order to be approved of. Uh, yeah, yep. And so the rest of the people, and and you know, and the in the wars against. Christ, and it's coming from a lot of different um, angles. One, we have the homosexual sort of community led by Dan Savage, the blogger who's been getting news lately, who, um, you know, believes that people like us ought to be uh, forced, I guess, into homosexuality or forced into internment camps or forced, you know, or tortured or something. There are people now openly calling for the torture of us backwards Christians. Yeah. In our yeah, homeland. In our homeland. That's where we're going. Yeah. They, they're just yeah, calling but... for the open torture and incarceration of these dangerous Christians in favor of these looters and Occupy Wall Streeters who, who should be the new great citizens. Yeah. With their tongues out, knees bowed to the state, their tongues out for their drugs, and their hands out for the next handout. I guess that's it. I guess that's where we're at. I mean, you know, the alternative would have been this, to have stood up, uh, you know, with one voice and beaten it back, you know, for 100 years. And because this is a spiritual battle, these people are of a certain spirit. They are, they are the soldiers of Satan. They are demonically possessed by, you know, whatever you want to call them. They are his army. And basically, the only thing you can do is beat them back and beat them into submission and beat them down. I mean, it's 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 an age old battle, but they are the manifest, the physical manifestation of that dark spiritual force that well, we, call, and it, you know, it's because the church, the body, uh, gave up preaching the gospel, and that's where it all. That's where. Uh, 
the stand should have been made all along the way, and it hasn't been, and so now judgment is coming upon the church first. And uh, that's what we're we're entering into now. Well, we know what they'll and do. It, they'll just start singing "Kumbaya" and can't we all just get along? While they're you know they're, they're just going to go along to get along. That's what the church will do. Yeah, I had a uh, a prophetic dream the night before last. Haven't had one of those uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. Haven't I've been in a whole different kind of space, uh, much more personal and direct uh, in the spirit. Um, and I've just had, you know, one eye on kind of what's going on in the world, but, uh, he's just been taking me in deeper into the place of, uh, protection and strength to mm-hmm. weather what's coming. And, uh, but the, uh, what night before last, uh, I was about to go to sleep and the spirit just weighed heavy, heavy, heavy on me. He said, no, it's time to put out the call. Um, and so I wrote, uh, I wrote what I was uh, I derived, which was, uh, it, it is time to prepare your soul. That's why when I uh, became uh, what second time born again, if there's such a thing, I was really born again in 2004. Uh, in that first, the first day of that, when I, it was kind of gave me my marching orders, uh, the phrase he said, the phrase I heard was prepare your souls. At some point, that's the, that's the clarion call. That's a clarion call for you to give at least in, in, you know, whatever small sphere of influence or whatever, that's it. Well, that call came night before last. It's, uh, you know, this is the time. Now is the time, uh, to, to, to move to a deeper, real level of, uh, just fully into the Holy spirit and into Jesus. And then that night, um, and I haven't, I haven't, that I can recall, really been dreaming at all lately, which is unusual for me. I'm a uh, have a lot of dreams and always have had, but haven't for a while. I had a a, a dream uh, falling on the heels of that uh, Holy Spirit impression, mm-hmm. and um, it, what what happened was it, the dream was my son and I were were going into the city, felt like an eastern city, maybe Chicago. Uh, somewhere back, it felt like a, somewhere in the east, but uh, a big city. And as we were riding along, my son noticed uh, fire, you know, fire off uh, in some buildings. And as we kept driving, saw another fire on the horizon. Pretty soon uh, we were seeing fires starting up all over the city in all kinds of places. And it, and it became clear that these were not uh, accidents or <clears throat> naturally occurring fires. Uh, they were being set. And uh, we went deeper into the city, and the day was starting to end. It was starting to turn into evening, and uh, the city was clearing out of uh, regular folks, regular working class folks, and you pretty much just had the city dwellers, uh, which you know the army uh, of the regime uh, in the city were, and and they all had this very dark, threatening, menacing look about them that was increasing, and so the fires were were raging here and there. And and it was said that you know to me to my mind, this is to stretch the resources. This is to get so many of the uh, authorities in so many disparate places. They're not going to be able to handle what's coming. So we went deeper into the city, and then we were on. Um, uh, I we got out and I started walking around to find out what was going on. Um, someone said, from an alleyway, I heard someone say the Black Panthers are organizing over at such and such, and, you know, when night falls, all hell's going to break loose. So me and my son, uh, we got on a bus, and it was a Christian bus. Uh, somehow it was, this was like a little a little yellow bus, and it had, uh, like, uh, Christian folks in it. And we were riding to get out of the city because darkness was falling, and the threat was looming, and people were starting to mill around, and you could feel this impending sense that something was about to go on, about to blow. And uh, here's what here's what I think it was a direct uh, prophetic vision of what what is going to happen with the church as these things start to happen. We we pulled up to we were right in the inner city, and uh, a group of of uh, the city people, the people that were getting ready to riot and cause mayhem, wanted to get on the bus, and. Uh, but they said they weren't causing mayhem yet, so that just looked like a, a group of people that needed to get on this bus. And some of the people on the bus started saying, "Oh, don't let them on." 
and there was like maybe one or two voices saying, "Don't, don't let them on. They're gonna, they're gonna tear, they're gonna tear us apart. They're gonna come in here and cause mayhem if they get inside." And uh, a pastor, like a young, a young kind of hipster guy in his maybe late twenties, early thirties, mm-hmm. uh, was standing on the side of the street there with this group of city uh, people that wanted to get on the bus, and he's saying, "You've got, you've got to let them on." And every people on the bus saying, "No, we can't. You know, don't do it. We can't." And he was saying, "Oh yeah, yeah. There's no problem. We've, we've got to. They've got to come on the bus. You know, they're included. There's no. You can't keep them off the bus." And uh, they, uh, he he managed to insist that they get on that bus. And then I got a flash vision of it was mayhem. As soon as they got on the bus, they just started slaughtering people. Mm. And uh, and of course, this was uh, this is what's going to this is what's happening with the church as the civil unrest which is highly organized, which is communist driven. Yeah. Uh, they are going to, they may literally set fires or they're going to set so many uh, disruptions going on. That all the authorities are stretched. Everyone's going in every direction. And the quote church, you know, the mainstream church is going to try to make friends with these people. Just like what you were saying earlier, mm-hmm. they're going to try to accommodate and say, look, we've got to involve them. There's, there's issues that need to be addressed. There's social issues, all of that. We've got to include that into the church. Well, that once that happens, I mean, whatever the vestiges in the church of any kind of truth, any any manner of the gospel, are going to be shredded, are going to be just uh, torn apart, and uh, it's pretty uh, pretty horrific vision. And that's where that's where we're going. I'm certain of it, uh, but in in a way that's going to be very very overt, very blatant, the type of persecution. And if you don't go along with it. Uh, you you won't you won't be in your church, yeah. And this is what believers are going to be. Uh, this is why I'm so intent in getting to the Lord of, of of finalizing that that deal, that acceptance of the gospel. Because that is all we are to be about right now. Is well, there really isn't the any gospel. Where else is there to go? I mean, think about it. What else is this life for? That's well. It's for nothing else, and all, there's going to be so many distractions, and so many temptations, and so much fear drummed up for the things that we're going to see. Uh, this is what people. But see, people, your soul is at stake. You can't accommodate. You can't ride the fence on this. You can't serve two masters. No. And no. we, we I, have I, been I, in a in a, a little leeway period. Let me, let me capsulize uh, it. Let, let, let me let me sum it up. I, I think I I can really cut to the chase here, just for the for the listener. What Brother Thomas is saying, basically, is it's, um, you know what, or get off the pot. <laughs> no, what he's saying is that this, uh, this, the war that has been largely in America, spiritual and invisible, is now visible. And it's a communist versus, which is anti-God. So, you know, it's anti-God versus God. And the anti-God people have done all the recruiting and, um, you know, basically they're coming for you. And so are you going to stand and say, I'm with Jesus Christ, the gospel, you know, Yahweh, Father, the Lord, the word of God. And they'll, they'll make it, a, a, you know, you either renounce that or they haul you off. And there's your chance to stand for Christ. Cause, and that's maybe you only get one chance. You might only get one chance. And um, or are you going to be like like Peter was with our master who, you know, said, I don't know this guy. You know, when Peter was asked, don't do you know him? He goes, no, I don't know him. And he denied him. And then, you know, of course, he repented. But um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of that going on. There's going to be a lot of that going on. But the, the thing is, is that, you know, this is probably looked at from the perspective of heaven or Yahweh or the spirit. It looks like okay, Yahweh is getting ready to provide the great the the great um, test. Will you stand with the truth, with the Lord, or will you uh, play the game and try to survive a little longer? And by survival, what what many people are going to be tempted to do, and what the church is going to do, is try to fix the system, try to be social activists, try to fight back. Uh, with worldly hands and worldly means and worldly eyes and using the, the tools of the system, the very system that is antithetical to the kingdom of God. Yeah, it, yeah and, it's, it's physical. It's, it's, it's limited. 
you know, it doesn't have a lot of power, you know, in the, in the physical. They, they, they have to actually own guns and tanks and armies and things like that to get their way. Well, and, and it, where people are going to be focused on social causes, social and political issues, mm-hmm. they're going to be drawn out of the spirit. And uh, that, that, that is no place to be right now. I mean, right now, uh, there's no more time. There's no more time to dilly-dally. Uh, <laughs> well, they're going to reject you. Any- Folks, they're going to reject you anyway. I mean, this is what I go through. You know, people that are not, you know, who are once born and we're twice born, you know, whether we like it or not, that's what made us outcasts was that we were given new life, you know, with the blood of Christ. You know, washing the blood of Christ equals twice born. You're born again. And when that happens, the world just can't understand you and feels like it. they feel like they want to fix you or that, that you're doing it on purpose or you're being standoffish or you're not being one of the, you know, you're being snobbish or you're being, you know, some, some kind of thing like that. But it's not that it's that you were set apart for him, you know, for wherever, whatever he's going to do with us, we were set apart and there's nothing we can do to unmark ourselves. We can't make us once born once you're twice born. That's it. You know, the, the good news is you're written in the Lamb's book of life and you, you're eternal. The bad news is if it is bad news, is you will be tried or you'll be tested. You know, faith must be tested. But when you're twice born, you're given more than faith. You're given this, you know, a new life. And then if you try to resist it, then you have a lot of internal conflict, right? Yeah. You know, that that just makes it very, very difficult. And, you know, if you go with it, I I suppose, like they say, you know, a... A hero dies once, and a coward dies a thousand deaths. You know, it's it's kind of like that. I, you know, I, I guess Judas, and betraying Jesus, he died. You know, thousands of deaths before he actually just couldn't take it anymore and hung himself. You know, versus um, say Peter, who had a quick death, or or you know, um, uh, or Stephen, who had a who had a, a quick instant death. You know, and, and, you know, I don't know why it's like that. You know, it's like that for the people on the other side, too. I mean, they, they're they kind of like, well, if you don't join us, we'll just stone you, looking at it from the other side. So, so there's this big war going on where people get hurt all the time. It's never okay, though. Like, if you were on the other side, knowing what you know, and you're over there and you're hanging out, you're, you're upset, you're disturbed, aren't you? Because you know there's another way. You know there is the way that you're missing out on it. And then if you're with the Lord, you're like, gosh, I, I've been one of those people. I know what they're going to do to me because I've done it to I've done it to others. So there you are, kind of ducking and you know trying to get through it and not get hurt, which is understandable. And the damnedest thing is, this is what it is on Earth, and everyone is so busy denying that that's what reality is that nobody can see the line anymore or, or the actual real war that's going on between us all and within us all. And it's a horrible, horrible ordeal to go through. I just, I have a lot of sympathy for you out there that that are, you know, internally conflicted. And and you know, just realize that your, it's not your private affliction; it's a universal problem. You're just part of it. Everybody has it. And in other words, everyone's afflicted one way or the other. Like I say, the people I know on Satan's side, they, they didn't know it was as bad as it was, and they're waking up to the real horror right now, realizing what they bought into, and that not only is it going to take them down, but take their family down and curse their whole line, and they're looking at a serious tragedy, a serious tragedy afoot. And, they're, and, they're, and they're, you know, then they go back into denial hoping they can beat it. And then we are looking at serious pain, i.e. the rejection of loved ones, the rejection of family and society. You know, and I've gone through this for a a number of years where, I mean, literally, I've been toyed with for I don't know how, probably most of my life has just been mocked and toyed with and cut out of things and rejected and and shunned and and, and made fun of and, and mocked. And um, jokes played on, and in in you know that sort of thing, and it's just been hell. I mean, I, I look at it, and I go, you know, why even come here? 
if I had a, did I really have a choice in the matter? If I did, I'd, I'd say that I would just avoid the earth experience. You know what I mean? Because it, it's been nothing but pain. And you know, the irony is I've been blessed with just as, you know, with all kinds of things. And those things don't fi- fix the, the wounds. They don't, they don't help. So those of you hoping for better health or money or something, thinking that'll do anything, it'll do nothing. Zero. You're still at the end of the day going to have this conflict. Even if all your wishes came true, all your, what was it, Robin Leach, uh, caviar wishes and champagne dreams. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually a pretty good guy. I actually heard him on an interview while driving. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's seriously come out of the woodwork to talk about the evils of communism and what's going on in this country. Yeah. And he's, he's actually speaking out. But, I mean, he, he did have this show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, where – he just had, you know, the, the celebrities' homes. And, you know, that show is number one for, I don't know, like 10. People love to see how the rich and famous live. But then all you need to do is go through the supermarket and look at the tabloids, which are not that far off from reality. I mean, they, they you know, you can't really end up lying about divorce. People get divorced. You see nothing but broken families and broken people. You know, I've seen it myself living in places like Malibu and Beverly Hills and places like that. And I've seen the parade of lost souls. And it's like, and they're all looking for something. And it's really, isn't it sad, Brother Thomas? I mean, the whole thing. Yeah. It, you can't just it blame is, them. They're not. It's sad. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Um, I know uh, uh, a lot of people that uh, are believers, but are, uh, have not really turned to face God with their whole being, are very concerned right now, and they're worrying about their provision and their protection, and uh, a, lot, a lot of them, if they're able, are making preparations, uh, storing things, getting ready, getting plans. Uh, i I, I think that almost all of those preparations and plans are going to be moot. Mm. Um, nothing is going to, they're going to confiscate everything. Uh, at a certain point, you'll either be forced to relocate or they will come and take whatever stores you have uh, been working on for the past five, 10 years. And I know people are, are, are worried about that. They're wondering what to do. Do we leave the country? Do we do this? Do we do that? And what I'm saying mm-hmm. again and again, and it's really all I'm going to be saying going into the future, is uh, you've got to get Jesus in your heart, in your mind, and connect to the Holy Spirit completely, not partially, not not as something as you, you kind of think about and, you know, make a few feeble attempts throughout a, a week. This is every morning, all through the day and at night before you go to sleep, every single day. If you let a day go by where you are not working out your salvation, work, and I'm not talking about that you've got to, you know, I'm talking, not talking about works here, but working out your salvation, uh, doing your part, responding to the Holy Spirit call that is going out right now. To He's calling to His people right now. And, uh, it, and there's only two ways to go. It's either to run away from that and turn your face to the world or forget the world, forget these fallen kingdoms. They're, they're not fixed. They're not going to be fixable. It's only going to get worse. And there's only one way to prepare anymore. I mean, you can do what you can if you're able, and some people will be led to prepare, fine. But uh, all of that can be swept away in a moment. And, uh, and, and for the most part, I, I think it will be. I think that a lot of people's preparations are going to be absolutely mean if they will spend all that money, all that time. And, uh, and, and this is kind of good news for the people that are too poor to prepare. And they're wondering, well, I, you know, what, what, I can't do anything to prepare. Well, yes, you can. Because right now, you've got to pray to Jesus. You've got to turn from your sin, turn from them. And realize that you are forgiven. You have been forgiven. All of your mistakes, all of your sins, all the most awful things that you've done, you're a piker uh, mm-hmm. compared to Paul, compared to many of the saints who have gone on before. Your, your sins are, are nothing compared to them. Forget about them. Uh, 
when they start to, when, the, when that, because there's, there are spiritual forces unleashed on the dark side right now. They're going to be hammering you day in, day out. That's already happening now. People are snapping left and right. Yeah. Uh, there, the, right now, there's a specific spirit that has gone out, and it's, uh, I'll call it just right off the top of my head, a suicide spirit. There is a spirit of compulsion that if you're standing on a, uh, on a high wow. uh, building, a balcony, or driving over a bridge, you will feel uh, this spirit of compulsion to drive right off the bridge. Uh, to jump off the building. We had a guy just do it. It's the third one this year. One of my cousins is a school teacher and had his school class down at the public library on a field trip. And a guy on the top balcony of this, we have a very tall library, just jumped off, landed right in front of him. Um, I felt that spirit. I, I mean, I have no inclination whatsoever to suicide, but I felt the spirit come in. It's like a compulsion that comes in to be self-destructive. That 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 is a new unleashing of uh, demonic spirit that I've uh, it, it, this demonic flashing that's going on. I mean, it's been going on, but I'm I am saying we are in a new uh, new era of it. It is going to be more powerful now than most people are going to be able to bear. And there's only one way to prepare to be ready for what we are going into. And it is like today, get on your knees and uh, make that connection with God. If you're not doing it uh, constantly throughout the day, you're going to be swept up in this. You're going to be so terrified and that's the plan is to get you so terrified and so fearful and so concerned and fretting that you forget god you forget jesus you forget the gospel you forget what this is all about and it's not about fixing this world it's not about america it's not about anything that's going on right before your eyes right here there's one thing is we are saved we accept we have been forgiven and by accepting that salvation and then living in that, that and then you will start to change these these problems that uh, people have are dealing with these sins. A lot of them are sins of addiction right now, because that's one of the the, the enemies, the biggest uh, mm. biggest tools right now is to get people addicted to something or other, whether it's internet porn, whether it's drugs, whether it's uh, uh, pain pills is huge. Uh, antidepressants, and I'm not saying don't take antidepressants, but uh, you, that, I, I need to talk. Uh, I'm going to write about that more. There's a way to do it uh, and still maintain connection in the spirit because they're designed to cut you off from the spirit and put you in a, kind of a trance state that then can be taken advantage of through technology and occult power. So you've got there's a way to do it and a way to get through it and then a way to get off of it. But all of these are uh, and uh, people have had addictions. They're fighting with those things. But mm -hmm. wait, and w instead of wrestling with the flesh, instead of trying to use your will to conquer these things people don't have faith they don't have faith that if they literally if they just drop all of that turn and face god go to him seriously cry plead for his spirit to come into you and get in the word drench yourself in it become immersed in all things god jesus yeshua all the time You've got to be immersed in it. If you're not, you're going to be knocked over. You're going to be knocked aside, and you're going to lose it. You're going to get lost, and you're going to get imprisoned. You're going to become burdened. But he, if you do that, if you make that full-fledged decision today and face him, your heart will start to change. He will change you. He will start turning. He will take you away from those sins, from those, those nagging, the thorn in your side. He may leave a little bit, he may not, but he will start to change you. You will start to leave that way of life, that way, those obsessive patterns of thinking that just enslave people. Uh, he, will, he will transform you uh, slowly but surely, steadily. You're going to look back in weeks' time, months' time, and realize you are a different person. You are going in a different direction. Finally, something you've been struggling with for years and years, it's over. You will find yourself going in his direction, and now when you look at what's going what's happening in the world and what's about to happen, uh, you know, take it or leave it. it, it it's you will have the Holy Spirit is pouring out a power now that is going to give people the power of peace in the storm, and it is going to be a literal power. This isn't platitudes, and I'm not just talking. I'm not just you know giving a just a, some pat little sermon that you've heard a million times. I'm experiencing it. It's happening. I'm, I'm witnessing it in other people that I love. Miracles are happening in the Holy Spirit. There is a power coming forth from the Holy Spirit right now that is miraculous. It is transforming minds and hearts, and it, it gives you the power. It is not of this world, and it is a continuous power. It doesn't go away. 
it's not something that you feel good one day, and now you feel crappy the next day, and then you feel okay the next day. This is something you can latch onto. It's what you've craved your whole life is this steady stream of godly power and ability. It's a, you will be given an ability and a capacity to, to, <laughs> to truly move forward. I mean, the liar loves to steal, and uh, there is a, a, a blessed and holy moving forward. And, and too many people are stuck. They're stuck in the fence. They're stuck in the dark night of the soul. Because they're still toying with the world. They're still in love with the world and and in love with themselves. And they're hanging on to bits and parts of themselves. They've still got some dreams. They've still got some issues that they're trying to cling to and trying to make both work, you know. Maybe I can have part of it myself and the Holy Spirit and God. Well, no, you can't. And you can't. It's over. Kill that old man. Let him die. He's dead. He's already dead. He is, she is crucified in Christ. These are not platitudes. It really happens. And when you face the Holy Spirit, especially now, there, there's never been a time like now where this is pouring out in the way that it is because of the circumstances we're in. So it's got a whole unique flavor to it. It's got a whole, it, it's suited. The Holy Spirit adapts so that in the times that we're in, it, it can minister to you in these times. Uh, it's not just like uh, ministering to old men in robes, old ancient times in, with sandals, uh, it, this is modern times with all the technology, all of the new sins, the new kinds of the new ways to sin. Uh, Holy Spirit is there on top of the whole thing, knows how to work out all of those issues within you. And uh, it, it's modern. It's up to date. It, it's ahead. It's already way ahead. It's already anticipating what your needs are going to be. Uh, there's no other way to get through what is what we're going into right now. And uh, people have got to just stop, uh, stop uh, messing around with it, or you're going to get swept under, because uh, what, what, what's in store is, is going to terrify the flesh. And if you're identified with your carnal self, with your worldly ego, if you're still identifying with that thing and living through it, then that's what they're going to enslave. That's what they're going to imprison. That's what they're going to terrorize. And if that's where your identity is and where your life is, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be in instant hell. I mean, my, my, if you think you're in hell now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, as long as you're identified with that, so you got to come out of that uh, now. I mean, it's time. It's time now because we're very soon upon upon some just. I mean, you think it's bad now? We it really what we're going into is just it, it's gonna mortify the flesh. You'll be mortified. You'll be terrorized, and will this, uh, there's no other way. Will this be the good old days? <laughs> yes, I, that's one of my favorite things. My wife was she's been <laughs> fretting for the last for like six, seven, eight years, and I'm saying, oh, enjoy this, you know, enjoy a hot shower, enjoy the the food you have food and water to drink, and enjoy that when you oh, wake up in the morning, you've still got relative freedom to do what you will throughout your day. You think you're in bondage now, uh, you know, these are the good old days. What we've got now, and so and so now, now but now is the time to access the spirit because what I'm afraid and why I'm hopping on this is because the things that are going to start happening are going to be so dislocating to the, to the mind and to the heart that it's going to be very difficult to, to even think about God, to even to, to get into a prayerful uh, position, uh, to get on your knees. You're going to be too busy trying to survive and avoid being killed. Uh, or enslaved or poisoned, uh, a number of things. And so that's why now, in this, in this brief little lull, I mean, the, the calm before the storm, you've got to get on the right road so that when those things start to happen, you've got a momentum, you've got your direction, you just keep walking, you just keep going forward, the holy forward. You keep going <laughs> forward. on that road, but get on it now because you won't see it. The dust, when the storms, when the fires are lit, when the bombs are going off, you won't be able to see the road. You're going to be too terrorized. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's quite a uh, quite a sermon. I'm, you know, at the same time, I understand that uh, that fear people have, but you know, again, there's nothing really to go back to anymore. No, there's nothing that people look back and go, "Oh, gee, I want to go." It's back. not going back to the way it was. No, and and people are not looking for that anymore. That they're they seem to me to be um, just looking for any kind of moment of 
you know, respite out of the storm at this point. And, you know, uh, more and more, I don't think they're going to be worrying about things they can't control. They're going to realize they can't control what the, you know, what the the regulators are going to do or what this, this kibosh on the economy, you know, where where the, the economy is now being terrorized. I mean, you know, the, the, the targets out there are uh, everyone from the successful people on down are targets right now. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's the people that actually give other people jobs, you know, that would employ people, they're they're running scared. You see what I mean? Or is everything? Yeah. yeah they're, they're running scared now. The people that you traditionally, you know, um, uh, would would. Um, now I've seen people that in in extreme high income brackets that are still wheeling and dealing and doing things. There's a few. But I, I work for, I have had, uh, those are some of the, my clients painting, yeah. uh, are some very wealthy uh, church going, Mormon church going, but people that have, you know, just, uh, you know, made fortune. And uh, mm-hmm. I've never seen them like they are now, yeah, they, even when through they, the crash of, yeah. Well, the 2008. Well, you work uh, in, in in real estate, right? I mean, people buy houses and then they want, you know, you to come in and do like your thing uh, on their houses and their design work. And um so I would imagine if times were good, if they were buying and selling, doing what they do, taking those risks, you'd be on demand, you know, constantly 24/7. That and and just even uh, just constant up Keep. They constantly, they had, you know, money to burn and were always fiddling with their mansions and, you know, do this, do that. But uh, there's, there's a guy in particular I'm working for now. He lived in uh, Torrance, California, you know, mm. one of the uh, Palos Verdes, you know, very, very nice yeah. neighborhood. He he got out of California and uh, he's, he's my age, young guy, um, but young. Uh, well, you're, <laughs> we're all relatively young, brother, you know young. that. <laughs> we're all we're all the same age in the spirit. Yeah, well, he he moved here, but you know, took his California money, and uh, that bought even a bigger mansion here. And he's got this huge estate. Uh, yeah. But the, what I see in him these days, I've never seen. He's a really been a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, and he is so stressed out. Um, and a lot of uh, my clients, another one that I've I've worked for for. Uh, probably 15 years in one of the most exclusive neighborhoods, the old neighborhood here. They've been in this house, the biggest house in that neighborhood for well, 30, 40 years, and uh, they're selling it. I mean, these are people, these are like Browning arms type money, I mean, you know, Johnson and Johnson type money. These, these people are, uh, they're scaling down. They're worried. They're, uh, you know, sub, and this is just within the last year where the, I've seen a, a sea change in, 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 in a lot of them. So, yeah, a lot of these people that have just been carrying on, carrying on fine, it's even hitting them. Yeah, because um, they, well, like I say, when they're doing things, they're, they're employing lots of people, you know, when they're, when they're out, especially taking risks, you know, buying, selling properties, uh, businesses, things like that. Um, if they can buy a business and, and bring it up to snuff, then they can hire lots more new people. You know, I mean, that's the way it works. I mean, yeah, most people that's all changed. My whole work is changed. And, and I think it's because we're so, we're, we're at the end here, this 2012 thing, uh, there's something to it. Uh, I, there's just been a whole shift in, and, and, and for me, it's been a, also a Holy Spirit shift simultaneously. I mean, I'm, I'm being called and I don't, he's going to have to work it out somehow. But just to go into ministry full time, I mean, that's all there is. That's all there is left. There's, there's, that's the work uh, to be done. That's what I'm being led to do. I don't know how it's going to happen. Um, but uh, the, the, the other work is, is uh, it's not there. Uh, I mean, it's very, very, I mean, crumbs, just, just yeah. nothing. It's not sustainable. <laughs> so, and, and then this is, this is a sign. I, I knew this day would come, and it was kind of one of the, the red flag, one of the markers, the signposts that I've been, you know, that and the, the assassination and disappearing of uh, high-level media and uh, politicians, that's another sign that when people yeah. start disappearing, uh, you know, getting a Breitbart type situation. These are some of the signs I've been thinking when we're right at the doorstep and uh, starting to see that now. And so physical eyes can see what's going on. But what what has impressed me and is the the gist of 
what I if I have anything to say today, it is what is happening in the Holy Spirit to yeah. replace the loss of what you know people have been using as crutches to kind of get along. All those crutches are going to be gone, and so you better be you have the, the the crutch of the Holy Spirit, and that's it. When you do know, we there, wake up? Nothing else. When do we wake up and it's all different? You know, we wake up and. Yeah, the newspaper isn't there. The uh, the bank is closed. When when does that day come? When I mean, you know, the things you're used to seeing, right? You know, people yeah. drive to work. They drive to work, or they drive to you know somewhere, and they, they see people in the street. And there's the Starbucks, and there's the you know, there's the the bakery, and there's the um, there's the freeway. It's jammed as they're you know, uh, motoring on to their jobs and in their cubicles and their high-rise buildings. I mean, when when uh, does that go dark, do you think? It seems to be around end of the year, over that, the end of this year, over that cusp between the election mm-hmm. and what the... the Big trouble around that, the whole election coming up. Uh, who, who who do you think will win the? I'll put you on the spot. Who do you think will win the election? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? I mean, obviously, you know, if with the communists purge and all that, the choice would be, well, Obama will win. But now it doesn't look so clear anymore. Well, and I and I don't know that they know exactly because they can have it either way, and they've got the two options. They they get Obama in. And then, then it's just full speed ahead with just assuming full dictatorial powers, and just start. He's going to just start implementing things more than he is now. Or, I know one they'd really like to see, just from a purely demonic standpoint of loving suffering and pain on the streets, is if Romney a contested election where uh. Obama gets the uh, the popular vote. Mm-hmm. And Romney gets the electoral vote, and there's a split, like with uh, Gore and Bush. Uh, it goes to. I think that's going to happen. There'll be all kinds of reports of fraud. And, 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 and Zimmerman uh, and Zimmerman gets uh, acquitted, yeah. right? At the same time, right, right, right about that time is when the trial ends. So Zimmerman's acquitted, yeah. and then the uh, it goes. The Supreme Court says, "Well, Romney is really the. Uh, we've counted all the votes, and we've recounted. It's going to be Romney." And then, oh, Katie by the door, because then comes the exactly. race riots. They really want that scenario, because they want to activate the armies uh, so, that, they're, that they've got prepared here. So Charles, Man- so Charles Manson was tuned in. He was just ahead of his time when he was saying that there'd be a big race talking war. about the race war, yeah. That was his big thing. Manson's big thing was the, what he kept talking about over and over and over, and you know, just about anyone who... who talk to him or whatever kind of thing he was going on about. It was this race war that he was preparing for and even had vehicles to, to be able to escape in dune buggies so he could get, so he wouldn't have to be tied to roads because yeah. you know, that, that, that was what uh, Satan was going to do is bring this race war. And that's how the big takeover was really going to happen by using a race war. Yeah. That, that's, and that's what my dream was about uh, the night before last. Uh, it was about that, and more and more, you know, Brother Thomas, you see in the uh, in these, uh, like you know, the Drudge Report or different, you know, news outlets, wh- whatever they are, um, you see, uh, you know, I just saw one: a hundred um, blacks beat one white couple. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, fifty blacks, you know, loot just um, go and loot a store. Um, you know, 25 blacks beat up uh, an elderly white guy. And yeah, and I just I just wonder what goes in their mind if they if they if they have like 25 to one, they see some guy walking, hobbling down the street, some old white person hobbling down the street, probably on disability, maybe with a cane. And they just feel like we should just bully up on this. Do they think it's going to go good for them if that's what they're doing? It's going to go horribly for them because they're they're just being useful idiots. As soon as they're not needed anymore, believe me, the the, the quash will come on them. And once again, they'll be stuffed back in the ghettos and then go riot and burn their own ghettos down, which is what what usually happens. And then they'll be right back where they started. Yep. They must feel like like they're going to get something for, for beating up white people. 
Yeah, well, it's it's what's happening now is patterned after uh, what happened in Rwanda, mm-hmm. and I remember talking about this on one of our previous shows. Uh, but now we're I'm, we're seeing it where uh, you demonize through the media one part of the population, which is white Christians and especially white Christian males. But that's what they did in Rwanda on the radio. They, the whole media apparatus of the Hutus started. Uh, uh, just a constant hammering day after day. This is the source of your problems. These are the evil ones. These are the ones that are stealing from you. They're talking about the Tutsis, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that, they, that went on for months, and then the order was given, and uh, then, uh, you know, it was massive slaughter and, and genocide. That, that's what's happening now. That, I mean, that's... Yeah, the way the, 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 mach- the machetes came out, you know, there are people just literally dismembered on the streets. Yeah, arms, legs, different. heads. You know, there's people in place right now uh, from all over the world that are in our country that are waiting for that signal. And I, so that, and I suspect that to happen around. I mean, we'll see. We'll see uh, foreshadowings of it. I think starting today and going through the summer. But around that election, uh, that's going to be a big. Lynchpin, and then thereafter, uh, I think is when you start seeing what where well, everything has changed. The the horror for me now is that I see we don't any we no longer have the rule of law here. So the lawlessness that I see at the top just only it's only a matter of time before it trickles down to everybody yeah. else. But I mean, now you have Eric Holder involved in, you know, the Attorney General absolutely involved in um, corruption and crime versus gun running. And, you know, federal agents being killed and documents being subpoenaed and 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 acting oblivious to it like he's just not going to give them documents. He doesn't care what they do. They can have a contempt citation. They can do whatever they want. And I, here's here's my prediction about Holder. Nothing is going to happen to Holder, no matter what. He right. can just sit there and stonewall them from here till the cows come home and nothing yeah. is going to happen to him. Then this guy Corzine, who lost, I don't know, a couple billion bucks. He was like sort of the, yeah. another Bernie Madoff. Okay, you know, in, folks, in a rule of law, a guy like Corzine or Bernie Madoff or whatever should have gotten the Bernie Madoff treatment. But because he was a big backer of Obama, n- this is what's going to happen to Corzine. Nothing. Nothing. But then uh, Ted Nugent is the wrong type of arrowhead on, a, on his arrow. And, you know, right. he's uh, threatened with felonies. And his pigs are the wrong color. Or they're fair, they're 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 considered feral what in his pen, mm-hmm. and they're slaughtered. So that's what they do. That's what the communist regimes have always done, which is to uh, blatantly allow obvious criminals to go free, and then right. torment people of for matters of conscience for for political issues. They get hit with the hammer. They're the ones that are. Yeah, they're prison getting and they're, the, the government right now is getting geared up for a war against the people. You know, four million new rounds of uh, hollow point ammunition to TSA. Gee, who's that for? And uh, yeah. it's, the war on terror has been declared over, even though they they're trying to walk that back. But but basically, they're not going to walk that back. They said it, and it and it's done. You know, it's now the war on the people. It's the federal government, which is controlled by the communists, against the people of the United States who might be resistors or in the way of the final big push toward, toward a global, um, you know, a global uh, state-run dictatorship, I suppose you could call it, or, you know, some kind of a... Yes, and here's what the disciples of Jesus are to do, is to become John Hardy's. I think that was his name. He was a pastor, minister on the Titanic, who, while he was in the water, uh, giving his life vest to uh, other people, he was in the water, floating around, still screaming out, are you saved? Have you found Jesus? He was saving people down as, as he went under the water. He said, I'm going down, down, and then I'm, he said, I'm going up. Amen. And uh, that's what Amen. the disciples have got to do and well, I'm, about, I'm right. here to work on people. You, you know, the people I've been, you know, I've been put in front of some amazing people, you know, good people, people that don't really know the Lord yet, but they're very amenable to it. And I'm here to say, if you tune into this broadcast, not meaning to scare you, but you know what? Our faith has to be in something more solid than, you know, the bank, than the dollar, than, than the permanence of the United States, than, than the Constitution, 
because these things are being shredded right and left. We, you know, now the question has become for a lot of these people, um, gee, what country should I move to? And that's now becoming more and more in the focus, especially of people who have had businesses and things and they're, you know, and they're not hiring now, unfortunately, because they're scared, you know, and they're now starting to talk about, um, other countries to move to. But the, you know, the fact of the matter is brother Thomas, you're right. There really is no place else to move to. There is no place on this earth that the reach of this global conspiracy can't reach. No, I mean, it really, it, it, it sounds cliche, but we really were the last beacon, the last, you know, the last hill left. And uh, when we go down, that's it. And it's we're Jesus. Going down. Folks, okay, so listen to me, rich and poor both, you know, and everything in between. Um, your riches mean nothing. Our riches mean nothing. Our material goods mean nothing. Ultimately, when this thing comes down, uh, you will not be able to buy your way out of it. Uh, so we got to put our faith in Jesus Christ and just, you know, really it's about coming clean. You know, it's about just admitting to God, to your maker that, you know what, you're a sinner. You know, you fall short. I fall short. I know everyone I know falls short, whether they admit it or not and admit you need help that you're not going to be able to, you won't even be able to face your own death without, without spiritual comfort, without spiritual comfort and real spiritual food. You can't face your own death or the bad things are going to happen to you just through natural you know, say it was 50 years ago, the things that happen to people are almost impossible to, to deal with without the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the truth of God. Like, for example, you know, why were you born? Don't you want to know the truth? You know, it's, it's not because you wanted to be born. It's because he wanted you born. Well, who's he? And why would he do that? Well, it's not really, you know, to, it gives me a great deal of comfort to know that it's really not about me. That's above my pay grade. Why he had me right. born here is n not my concern. See, I don't need to go out and find myself. It's enough for me to know that he made me, and he, the traumas I've gone through and the things I've gone through are exactly what I needed to go through to be the, the, the man that he needed me to be at this point in time. So I'm at rest. Now, no, I'm not going to fight to to save um, what uh, uh, my, my, a piece of dust in the New Mexican desert. Uh, a piece. I'm going to go ahead and start shooting people. And f I don't know. I, I you know I'm I'm not sure I would do that. I don't know what I'll do. But I mean, if it goes, let's say it got burned up or confiscated. C'est la vie, right? But if my God was my land, then. Obviously, I'd probably commit suicide. I mean, I'd be very disturbed. You know, and, and people are committing suicide now because they don't have anything. They used to have something, used to have some money, now you don't. Used to have some land, now you don't. Used to have a job, now you don't. Uh, so I think I'll commit suicide because my whole life, so that would mean that your God would be your job. Your God would be materialism. Your God would be the world. If you decide and to commit... What it should be is God. God should be your land. God should be your job. God should be your world. And if the Lord blesses you with health, what a lovely thing that would be. How about agelessness? <laughs> well, and we, we will. Oh, I see a fire. Huh. I'm, I'm sitting on a little hill, and I'm looking down, and there's a fire. You're kidding. No, there's a little fire down there. Um and it is yeah, it's gonna, well, we're here. Are the and, occupiers there in, in in Salt Lake? Yeah, we we got we've got occupiers. Are they burning things? <laughs> is it, is well, it, I, I'm I'm not down by the city, so this probably is just a random fire. But it's just kind of weird to see that because it looks exactly like what I saw in my dreams, with these little gosh. fires popping up all over. And I just, uh, and I won't be surprised if that's exactly what happens in some it, at some point. That that's part of the plan is set a lot of fires and then stretch all the resources. But, the Lord, the Lord is going to preserve. I just got this in the spirit. The Lord's going to preserve some of you to go on in the uh, post-apocalyptic. You see, they won't get their way. What will happen is this: just prior to their dictatorship being, you know, complete. It will crumble through factionalization and civil war. It will be destroyed. Everything will be just burned out buildings, you know, broken streets, broken cars, upside down cars, people wandering around in shock. Um, that's really the way it's going to look. 
And um, that will be a great day for the gospel. And on that day, no one's going to have anything. I mean, everything is going to be, you know, we'll do whatever we can do to survive. You know, the smart people will learn to work together and the stupid people will fight each other for that last scrap. Um, yeah. So get to the gospel now. Immerse yourself now. For real. Don't just, don't just let this pass. I mean, it's now. And that's the only way. That's the only way to get through what's coming. It's could it have been stopped? Uh, Brother Thomas, could this have been stopped? No. Okay. I don't... I just see, all I see is I open the Bible, I'm just seeing what was prophesied, and so we know where it's going. So mm. here we go. I can add to this another prophetic thing, that there's all these earthquakes going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were in California recently, and we, were, uh, we um, headed up the coast, and we camped out in Mendocino on the beach up there. It was really... It was amazing. Uh, Trish and I just had a little slice of heaven. We were just driving through. Yeah. Uh, I forget what highway it is. I think it's 128 that goes from the 101 to Mendocino. Have any of you been on that one? Okay, it goes through the most unbelievable yeah. rainforest that I've, I mean, I, forget Oregon. This this was unbelievable. It twists and turns kind of like the road to Hana in, in Maui, where I've been on that road before where, it takes three hours to go 20 miles. It's like, it was like that. And nothing but redwoods the whole way. And those ferns, you know, the ferns under the redwoods and little, and like canopies. You go through these canopies that were like half a mile long. And you could see just sh shards of light cascading through on the other end, you know? And everything, yeah. it had just rained. It was completely clear with puffy clouds going by and just the most, pr it looked like we were not even on earth. The road was perfect. How many people do we, no, you see no, there's no people out there. We're just driving one twist and one turn and we're stopping here going, oh my God, look at that. We stopped, oh wow, look at that. We stopped, oh, you can't believe this. Like I'd look at these long canopies of trees and I just couldn't believe it. I never saw anything that beautiful in my life, ever. Yeah, taste the heaven. And it was just like, and I'm driving through and then, we stopped at this winery. And I'm just going to sound to you like, like maybe I'm dead. You know, maybe, maybe I'm not even. You know, we're doing this, but maybe I'm already dead because we stopped at this winery, and it was just like there was a place for. We have a um, a motorhome at this point, a 2008. Um, well, what was the the Fleetwood made in motorhome called the Fiesta back then, and the Fiesta was like taking a like a longer motorhome, like 36 feet, but then making it smaller. It's hard for me to explain, but it, it really, you know, and then I did some stuff and made it drive better. And so it's pretty cool, you know, so there, but, but here's the hard thing with it. It's hard to find a place like to turn around, like on a street like that, on that little narrow yeah. road, turning around is like a complete nightmare <laughs> or finding a parking place. And so we, yeah. there, we finally got to this place on that, on that highway where it was one winery after another in the most perfect, idyllic place for growing certain kinds of wine, of grapes. And like I say, it had just rained and there was a glistening on all the plants and all the vines. And we found this one winery pulled off and there was a place for the motorhome, almost as if they made it just for this, the motorhome to stop in. And the dogs got to get out and you know, we walked into the, to the winery. There's no one in there. This is why I'm thinking I'm dead. The the fields are beyond are beautiful, and the it's so gorgeous of a day that it's beyond description. It's about seventy degrees or so, and um you know or high sixties seventy right around in there, and uh, we get in there and the guys pours the wine to sample and wouldn't you know it's like the best wine you've ever tasted in the world it, it, like you've never had wine that's good it's not vineyard no one ever heard of you know they don't do a, lots of cases but they 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 win awards and um it's it's like the best again I, i'm starting to think i'm not really alive i really was thinking this and then we headed on as and then bought a couple of cases of wine and then you know got back in and just kept driving uh, you know, toward the coast. And then when we got to the coast, it was the same thing. The streets, you know, the the canopies left, the, the redwoods left, 
and there's this narrow kind of winding road on Coast Coast Highway One, which is not the 101, but one. As we're heading up to Mendocino, and uh, finally to top the day off, we wound up in this. Uh, there was like a campground in in the north northernmost end of uh, of this that you drive down a little hill to, and it's the everything is green and idyllic, like you've never seen right on the beach, and there's no one there. It looks like you, you know, like if you got to, I don't know, I can't really, maybe I'm not even describing this right, but oh, there, I, I get it. I can there was it. like, there's a couple of people, there's a couple of old, old geezers like us there, the, you know, like one yeah. camper, a couple, you know, down, but it was again, the green, green everywhere. And then the beaches and then the wild ocean beyond. And, uh, and that was it. After the, that, after the that, world to come is going to be beautiful, uh, like that. I mean, that's a taste. That's a foretaste. I love God. I love the beauty. What He does. His diversity. I mean, that's all we were. But that's all we were thinking of. Pray, everywhere we went, we went praise God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. God. God. What have you done, God? Oh my God. This is unbelievable, yeah. Lord. So we needed to see that <laughs> contrasted yeah. by. After that yeah. was over, we we drove back. Uh, to the five, we had to get back from the one hundred and one to the five, and had to go like through Bakersfield. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the worst, most awful. And we were both so depressed after that because we had just seen heaven or a foretaste yeah. of it. We, yeah. you know, like the best wine you ever tasted, or the best thing you ever looked at, or everything was just like the essence of the ultimate for just a, you know just a, a short period of time. Maybe the Lord wanted to show us something. And then you got to see heaven, and then Bakersfield. It, then Bakersfield, <laughs> and there we are. And, and Trish is so bummed out she can't even talk. And I'm driving, and we're you know, behind a line of people, and and it's just yeah, and, oh, yeah that line that goes out of the well. We were on the uh, we had to go on the 58 across the Mojave Desert, and then to get to that, there's this. It just takes forever. And, and traffic jams out in the desert, and oh. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is, and there you are, and the and the weather is not good, and the air is not good anymore. Yeah. And there's not yeah. nothing to look at. It looks ugly. It's just a sprawl. And there's nothing but shopping malls. You know, the typical stuff, Best Buy and you, you know, Costco and Walmart and you know, those kind of chain stores. That's all you see along there and you know, Chevron Gas and the seventy six station and whatnot. And you're driving through it and it's just awful. I can't even. It was just, just awful. It just was like, Lord, do we really even need this? To, is this really necessary? And all I could see in the kind spirit, of rubbing it in, huh? all I could see in the spirit was, you know, these places won't be here much longer. I could yeah. see it being a ghost town that those corporate stores, like we, we thought Borders would be there forever. Remember, Borders is gone. Yeah. We thought yeah. Circuit City would be there yeah. forever. Circuit City is gone. So anyway, we're looking at corporate America. In other words, corporate America built all these stores and all these retail outlets. They all had a certain, you know, whatever city you went to, and we do some traveling. So we see from city to city, wherever, wherever we went to, you would have the same template in a city. You move in, oh, there's the Costco, there's the Walmart, there's the Best Buy, there's, and um, I could just make one prediction right now. Now that will not always be there like that. No. That's why I was asking you, when do you think that will stop? And then, yeah. you know, the other, the other thing I wondered was in Bakersfield, where uh, there's like, I guess the community there is like, there's an awful lot of agriculture going on around Bakersfield. So the main thing is you have, you know, the illegal alien, you know, the, the, the picker. So you've got lots of those people coming to pick the... Uh, all the uh, fruits and vegetables and things, and um, and then and then hightail it back to Mexico, and so you've got that going on, and then you've got these sort of, I don't know. It, to to me, it looks like the whole thing's going to collapse. Yeah. Um. Yep. But you know, and 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 you know, and I don't know. We we never all the way back here. We never saw anything like that. If and those of you forgive me if it's not the one twenty eight, then it's the one twenty five. It's the one twenty something. Yeah. West, right after a rain, and the sun pops through. Oh, it that was just the most amazing thing. I may never see anything like that again. The only other thing I could compare to that would be when, when I was on the road to Hana, where I drove the whole highway to Hana back in the 90s, like 1992, 1993. 1992, the summer of 92, I was in Hana, Hawaii, and we had a 
convertible and we were driving along the road there and it was just like everything was oh my god that's amazing the difference is on the road to hana these demons these winged creatures jumped on my neck and attacked me and then after that i went right to the bar and that that wrecked that wrecked the rest of the vacation now I was, you know, not not <laughs> I was not needing to escape in that way. And after they jumped on me, um, like you were talking about addiction, I felt myself going, you know, being to get away from that oppression of these demons. I had to start right. swatting them off of me, and I tried to get them off me, but they jumped on me. How, why they jump on me? Why did I perceive? They're, no, they're not visible to the naked eye. How would I know they're winged? Because I could kind of see in the spirit they're like almost like those winged monkey creatures, like in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I've seen how they jump on your back. Well, they jumped on us and or jumped on me, and then it kind of wrecked the wrecked the rest of the uh, vacation. Up to that point, it was really great, and just as I was, why? Because I was not prepared back then, and, and when I was thirty five years old, uh, I was not prepared. I did not. I believed in my own power, not the Lord's power. I was operating under my own ego, not not the Lord. And um, so, therefore, didn't pray prayers of protection. Wasn't constantly thinking about the Lord like we do now. Constantly giving praise and thanks. Constantly asking the Lord, which way, Father, which way? Like that whole road to Mendocino, we didn't know where we were going that day. We just turned left. Let him, and just let him drive. You know, we, we had to do some things in Los Angeles, and we decided to, to retrace our honeymoon, which was back in 1994, and our honeymoon was spent in Mendocino. Why? I don't know. You know, it's beautiful. I guess that was it. And um, I'm happy to say that in our second honeymoon, or retracing our steps, it was even better this time than before. And bef- okay. before we didn't have, we weren't, didn't have the Lord on our lips. Service. We've had to survive a bunch of things and a bunch of um, awful things. I mean, in attempted murders and things like that, where we needed to ask the Lord to protect us and to guide us. Yeah. Back in 1994, we didn't do that. Yeah. I guess we weren't considered a threat, but like I say, Satan's outside of time. He knows exactly who's going to be a threat and who's going to be, you know, a threat meaning who's going to be stealing souls for Jesus. Right. Not stealing, but who's going to be winning souls for the Lord? Right. And those yeah. people, you people that are soul winners out there, you, uh, you, you know, because it only makes sense that we would all accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and be the way, the truth, and life. There isn't anything going on on earth that we can possibly do. I mean, the, even if you build the greatest house and the greatest this and that, you're still going to get old and die. Even if you tried to make this, like if we tried to freeze Mendocino and make that our heaven, we'd still get old and die. Wouldn't be able, you know, still we wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Yeah. It's still going to be fleeting and sad as we try to hold on to our, you know, to you know, as we try to hold on to our sanity and dying and, world and not flow it's into dementia. As, as you start flying into dementia, and you don't recognize who people are as you get old. You know. And the trees start fading and the sun fades and the, the taste of the, the wine, if that's what you like, uh, the taste of wine starts to fade and you can't enjoy it anymore. The biggest thing is whether you can go to the bathroom or not. I mean, and that's what it, your day becomes, you know. Uh, I have to tell you, um, right there, Brother Thomas, that's, uh, if, if that's not a reason to accept Jesus who guides us into eternity, who is the way to eternity, the way to the Father, the only way to the Father and to eternity and to peace and to the truth. You know, you weren't born to be garbage. You weren't born to just get old and, be, and suffer and die. Right. There's more to it than that. There is, and as people, uh, people see the, the increased loss of freedoms, it's going to be uh, very obvious more than now as you watch the loss of freedom in your physical realm, there is freedom in Christ. There is liberty. There is freedom mm-hmm. in Jesus. And as we lose our freedoms on the outside, that's why now you've got to go inside where there's freedom. They, and they can't. He can't. No one can take it away. That no man can give it to you. No man can take it away. And it is real freedom. And there is such freedom in the gospel <laughs> in Jesus. We uh, we we freedom met. Is, 
I have to tell Amazing. you, we met this guy. Um, he was the one that poured our wine, and he was sort of and he and he had like a dolly, and he was taking our two cases. I got a case of. Uh, well, if you don't drink, that's fine. I mean, you know that that's I don't judge you. Don't judge me for having for buying wine. I, I bought a case of this uh, Sauvignon Blanc and a case of uh, Pinot uh, Noir, which is can only be grown in a certain place to actually be legitimate Pinot Noir, and this is this was the place. Anyway, so he's guiding it back, and he said he came from Orange County, California, and he was just like. You got this feeling as he was guiding our the the, the cases into the um, back to our RV that he was um, he was like trapped and wanted to go with us. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and and so here he was. And no, no offense if if he does tune in. I'm, no offense. I mean, but but that's how it seemed to me. Like he was kind of trapped there. I mean, it was really quiet. There was nothing going on. People were bored. You know what I mean? It was just like mm-hmm. that. The, to them, it wasn't. To this guy. That winery, his job, that wasn't paradise. You know what I mean? He was just there, and it looked like he was wondering why he went there. Because he had come from L.A., and then he ended up there. And it was almost like, how did I wind up here? <laughs> yeah, to him, it wasn't, it wasn't paradise. And, and I have to tell you, the other thing is, I got in this almost a confrontation with these locals in, uh, in Maui. You know, they pushed me to the back of a line when I was in line. They all butted in front of me. And I didn't say anything. I just said, you know, okay, fine. And, you know, they tried to make it bad vibes and all that. Huh. Well, for them, it was no slice of heaven. Right. There was no paradise in paradise when I was in the Caribbean. And I went off to uh, St. Lucia and stayed there for a month living on a plantation. I thought, oh, how great. No, I didn't find paradise. I found people dealing drugs and having shotguns and shooting each other and all kinds of things like that going on. You know, the drug trade, I mean, you know, and the prostitute trade. In other words, in all these nice places, you have drugs, prostitution, all the vices that humans get into. And then, of course, along with that comes the murders and the, and, 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 and the strife. And then, and then to top it all off, we're taught as we're children, you know, in school, they want us to conform to the world's ways. I mean, that's basically it. School is a vetting process for Satan's world. Let's face it. So you learn the ways of the world in school, and if you don't make it through school, then you know then they then they know not to employ you because you're a weirdo or a misfit, right? But I mean, basically, school is there as a conforming mechanism, and so is church for a society, to, so that you will be a good slave. You will you will love your servitude, you will do what you're told, and you will look the other way on immorality. When it's, when it's under the banner of playing the game to get ahead or so you don't lose your job, right? Yep. Okay, who can live with that? Well, I want to see a, 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 out there like a, an array of hands. Who out there can live with themselves? Can, can you f- figure going off all the way into your death being that kind of hypocrite completely? I mean, we're all hypocrites to a certain extent. You know, we've all been nice to people when we, you know, we've kind of, you know, let them get away with their lies. You know what I mean. We've been light hypocrites <laughs> yeah. to a certain extent. You know, you get to the family, di- you know, you, you know what I'm saying. You, you, you know, yep. We've all done it. And then I know people who are colossal game players because they, they told me, they said, well, if I don't play the game, and we don't do business. Yeah. Now, those people more than anyone else need Jesus. They need a place to go with that and say, Lord, how do I work this out? I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I have to be a hypocrite because i got to play the game or I ain't going to eat. So... How do I do it, Lord? Now, they may not obey what he says back, you know, because he might say something like, well, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. (laughs) And then, you know, relinquish yourself of those burdens. You know, in other words, don't do business so you have to lie to people, in other words, to, to get along. But see, all those skills are taught to us in school. We're, we learn to lie. We learn to, to, to um, you know, to, to um, cover each other's iniquity. We learn to play the game. Even on a light level, even, you know, uh, like me and being in the uh, loony bin, I had to learn how to play the game there. Or I would have never gotten out of there. 
You know, I had to learn what to say, what, you know, total lies, but I had to tell them, yes, you're holding up three fingers, not four, in order to, you know, to get along. And the same thing happens in school. You, they teach you obvious lies in, in, in anthropology and, you know, evolution or who knows whatever it is. And you spit back the answers on the test. So what does that tell you when you get your degree? They don't care what you get your degree and They just want to they know that you have a degree. Why? Because it means you've been vetted. You are ready for the big lie now. And those who do well with the big lie, they get an even bigger lie to jump into. And even more money to go squander in Vegas or wherever they're going to go. Yeah, and that's all that. that all of that is our life. Do you realize that? What we're talking about? That's all our, we look forward to going to the uh, local watering hole. Here's a big celebration getting out there and getting a giant pitcher of margaritas and some nachos and sitting out there and, and looking at the ocean. Okay? And, how, and that's heaven. Fine. And how long will that last? Mendocino, that little slice of heaven, it was there, had the wine tape gone. Had a bottle of wine later on down at the, at the beach, then that day was gone. Then I left. I have some of that wine that it had in the cases, now some of it's in the fridge and others kind of packed away. Maybe I'll have it. Maybe I won't. I've kind of gotten bored with it. It just can't get up for that. That just can't be what it's about. I can't sit there with a, with a thing full of tobacco, let's say, and a, and a goblet of wine and sit there while the sun's going down and say, oh, another perfect day. Great. While I wonder what day will be my death and what did I do here on this planet anyway? You know, I mean, I can't live here. It's going to go. You know, then we, you know, then recently my mother passed away this last year. She uh, felt she was going to live another 10 years and she was boasting to uh, her servants and whatnot. Oh, I have enough money to last me another 10 years. And she was snatched out of life like, bam, gone. That was it. Yeah. Uh-oh. Wow. And then I said to, to her, her attorney, who was an old friend of mine, I said, you know what? Hey, brother, you and I are next. So in other words, whatever it is we have to do here, we better get on with it and do it. Because this is it. Uh, for those of you that are in my age category, this is sort of it, isn't it? We're the next ones to have bedpans, Right. Okay, sorry to be the bearer of bad <laughs> news. I'm, I, I'm not even talking about conspiracy here. I'm just talking about the horror of life. Yeah, it's this, this whole death. Uh, it's all fallen. It's all corrupt. And uh, what we're seeing now is just the, the fruit, the rotten fruit of centuries of that, of, of a world without God. Uh, and... Um, well, looking back on looking back on it, Brother Thomas, looking back on, like, say, Mendocino now, that's a memory now. Just to, to bring an all full circle, it's a memory. It's gone. It was a great moment, but it's gone. You know? and it and it it doesn't do me a lot of good remembering it. It kind of makes me a little sad. Yeah. Well. That's it. And that's, you know what? That would be the best of what life has had to offer, these memories. You know, the glory days of high school or whatever. Those times when we were happy. You know what? All it is is a fleeting, you know, and all I can do is just sit there and think about that memory and start crying. There just has to be some way out of this. So that's not even adding in communism, Occupy Wall Street, burning down cities, um, race riots to come, and, of course, the presidential election being nothing but one huge race war. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone out there who does not accept the Lord Jesus right now just are, are on your face? I mean, is there anyone out there who is unwilling to try even to reach out to Jesus, to God, God is Jesus. So to God, is there anyone unwilling 
to open up the Word of God and see what it has for them? Is there anyone who's unwilling to at least try? Any one of you who feels that through your your provisions, your birth, your schools, your jobs, that you're actually going to make it somewhere? Anyone who has hope in any of that stuff? Well, if you have that hope in those things, you know, good for you. But it only means you're ignorant. You haven't really lived enough to see enough tragedy to where you understand that can't be what it's about. That's not going to keep you going. All right. Brother Thomas, I'll give you the last one. I'm sorry. I've blathered on. I haven't talked to the peep, peeps out there for a long time either. So now I guess I'm blending it with, with talking to you. It's a real honor to talk to you on our May Day show. We've been doing it now for six years. Yep, six years. And it's May Day 2012. It's, uh, it's a pretty significant marker. Wow. And just saying all of that, all of, all of that sorrow, the sorrow of this life, Sorrow of what's to come. All the, oh yeah, there's an escape route. There's freedom. There's protection. There's power. There's energy. There's change. There's transformation. That real transformation of your heart. And uh, as the time is now, I mean today and every day going forward. I mean it should be every day now. You've got to get on your knees, figuratively, literally, in the Word. The Word uh, has a way of. of uh, you need to get that in your mind. Uh, it starts displacing all of the rot, all of the hanging on old garbage that's in there. Uh, that's the way to go. It's the way to go right now, and it's time. Prepare your souls. We're here. <laughs> We're here. Uh, it's clear. <laughs> get used to yeah. it, right? Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. You know, I, I wish that there was some kind of thing I could do or say that would give a permanence to anything going on here in this life. But unfortunately, there's nothing we can freeze and just kind of take it with us or keep it for our secret uh, stash of happiness. No, that's why we've just got to have the Holy Spirit and Jesus, because then you start tapping into something eternal and that is life-giving day-to-day and all this, all the rest of this stuff is old and dying and that is ever new it's it's refreshing it's the living water there is living water within it's not Amen. just a phrase it's not just something you read about it's real Amen. and uh you, you want to get that you want to get to that fountain so that every day is refreshed and regardless of what's going on and it's about to go on and those who are you're fine and those who are called to do things in this life and do them well and that's that's wonderful you know we all want to do well but you're going to have to, you know, what? there's a guy I know that, like, he doesn't need to be doing things, and he could easily retire or whatever, but he says he, he does it because it's uh, it's fun. You know, I mean, if you can have that attitude, then that's, that's, that's Christ, that even though that sounds crazy, it's fun. You know, yeah. I mean, it's fun, right? I do this. Uh, let's say it's houses. I buy, I buy them and sell them because it's fun. You know, I don't need to really. I just, mm-hmm. I'm doing it cause it's fun. You know, I, I, um, whatever I, um, I'm in ministry because it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I'm in ministry because I think I should be in ministry because it's the right thing to do. No, I do it because it's the natural default position and it, it gives me some kind of joy to do it. Um, I, in other words, it's not something I capital I am doing. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a detached yeah. thing. It's just like the people that do really well and who there will be people doing well in this economy in this time. And I bet you anything you talk to them and it, it's not so serious. You know, I must succeed and I will dedicate myself daily to my success and I will suffer for the goal and I will get it no matter what I have to do to get it. People like that, you know, with that attitude, sorry if you've had to suffer under a tyrant like that as your father, (laughs) but people like that kind of attitude usually wind up broke. And miserable. And miserable and wind up with nothing. The Lord has a big habit. If you you can't put anything before him, let's say, um, you know, you, there's nothing wrong with success. And I never would say that. I've been, I've been all about the entrepreneurial spirit, you know? Uh, I saw something the other day I thought was an incredible 
thing. I just loved it. Uh, it was it's it's called the Blue Beacon. It's a truck wash. It, they wash semi trucks. They don't have them all over the country, but whoever came up with this idea was a genius. Basically, you go into this booth and they sort of spray down the whole truck. They have these big wands, you know. They get like seven guys on it, and they just and they even hit the top of the truck. You know, these big semis go through, and they're busy twenty four seven. There's a line of trucks. They are never on a holiday. Who, and no, no, you can't invest in it. Whoever these people were that put this together, it's their own private investment. You could work there and become a manager. You would never, you would never be out of business if you, if you work there. You would always have a job. It's almost like, you know, and, and what is it? it, it what, what people didn't realize is there's a lot of these truck drivers who don't like having a dirty truck. And before the way they were washed is there'd be a group of people that would be outside washing. Now, you go into a little booth, and they close off the booth, and they go ahead and do it, you know. And you can get products like they can quickly wax it or they can put rain on it or whatever, you know, do your tires. And so you see a lot of these trucks now with these, like, Armor All tires. And, you know, there's a certain thing. Anyway, what am I saying? I am saying that um, I don't know if the guy was a tyrant that started that, but, you know, it's – things in our society when it worked, you know, there was a freedom to be creative. You know, a lot of the best ideas I've had have been where it just was a happenstance, you know, and that's what I think is the Lord's doing. It wasn't through ego or through covetousness or really wanting to, to fulfill a dream. <laughs> Not, you know, all that desire for the goal. It wasn't like that. It was something I kind of fell into. Anyway, so th- those are the, hap- the happy-go-lucky things. I often like to point those out, too. And, and there's nothing, like I say, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't think Brother Thomas or I am telling people to um, sit there and do nothing. No. No, we're here, and we're, we're, we're occupying this space. <laughs> hey, we're uh, doing our Occupy bit today. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your, uh, what are your pl- well, you live in a very beautiful place. We have yet to get up there and visit, but I have to force you, I've got to remind you about this song we're going to do, and I still yeah. am going to hold you to it because and it may be that I just bring the, maybe in the RV we can do it. Because it's got perfect yeah. acoustics. It's all the ceilings have have like uh, like a carpet type thing on them, so they're they're it's all damped. Yeah, cool. So it's like a vocal booth. Yeah. But it's called the ethereal ending, and I still want to do that with you. Yeah, I will. And uh, you know, I still have dreams, not not goals like I'm going to kill myself to get it, but uh, I still have thoughts about our our mutual love of music and the, and the idea of, you know, I'm waiting on what the Lord will do with that. Yeah. Something. I'm, I'm still, 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 uh, still working away. Uh, while I'm consumed with Jesus, I'll tell you that. I, um, Amen. spirit is moving and moving big. And, uh, that's all I, I want to be about, all I'm about, and, and, and encouraging everyone else yeah. to, to get deeper, to go deeper. Now. Well, it's not really a self-will thing. It's really more like a giving up. Yeah, and to me, it's both. I mean, it, I think it's a, it's a mystery similar to the Trinity, uh, where it's it, you can't really do it unless he gives you the ability and the heart to do it. And at the same time, at the same time, there is this mm-hmm. free will thing that he has. It's, it's a mystery. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a paradox in this world, in this dimension mm-hmm. where there is this, uh, this element of choosing and of facing and turning to him. And, uh, where it, it's spontaneously a matter of free will, and and it's already set. It's already you're called to do it, and you're going to do it. Uh, it this is well, a real mystery. I believe that you were called by the Lord God, Yahweh Creator Himself, through Christ Jesus, Yeshua, the One, the Way, the Truth, to be really a minister of the gospel and to cut through all the crap and all the gimmicks and and you know, and you always have. And to be the true alternative, you know, to feed the lambs and to be a true alternative to the alternative, if you will. 
you're you're you were called to be an alternative to the alternative thing that was going on online <laughs> remember <laughs> yeah so you, you you're like brother thomas is like there's the you remember, you remember how we all got bogged down with prophecy smack and all these people making these predictions of gloom and doom in the end and, and mixing that with the gospel and how it was just so tawdry and dirty and disgusting and um well for me it was it just felt ugly and you know i wouldn't even have these people on anymore they just get on and start rattling off their mouths on you know all these bad things that were going to happen which whether they happen or not didn't matter just so you bought their books you know what i mean right so you you were brought on to be the alternative to them and we all know who they are we don't need to mention names again i've mentioned names constantly just to show that i'm not afraid of mentioning their names I'm i'm not afraid of them at all That'd be like being afraid of, a, of, of you know, a, uh, um, I don't know, a fly or something. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, I'm not afraid of what, what all they can do is run their mouth and go that, you know, Zeph or Brother Thomas is evil. But Brother Thomas was brought on to be an alternative to give you the real food and inspiration and the word from the Lord, what he wants you to know. In other words, he, what he's saying right now is this is what the Lord wants you to do. Put your all into him as your career and whatever else is going on, have that secondary. Put put all your chips on, on Jesus right now. Yeah. Put all your attention on Jesus right now. Uh, how do you do that? Oh, break open that word of God, read the gospel, read the Psalms. Just, just jump in anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's a supernatural document. You can't do it wrong. There is no wrong way. But just, you know, get connected. And then I know you want to fellowship with other people, and then you find corruption there, and then you get upset. I understand. That's been the painful pattern from day one over the last 10 years that we've done this. They hook up with Jesus. They want to connect, Brother Thomas. They want to connect with people. They try to connect with us, but we don't, we're, not, we're not cult leaders, so we don't do it for them in that way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so they so they go looking for a group to join, <laughs> yeah. and then they then they get upset, and then of course the group will st- start ragging on us usually, and um, you know start promoting other people that would be friendly to this group think kind of thing, like Godlike Productions or something like that, and then the next thing you know you're out there in La La Land with no faith in anything. Yeah. So that's. I'm, I hate that. But maybe in a way, the whole internet, you know, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's alternative. Right. Especially now. You know, the, the thing is to be fed and led. Well, the Lord's telling you right now through Brother Thomas to drop everything and jump into spirit full out. Because right, we, go ahead. we know what's going on. We know what's happening. We can see it now uh, rather than obsess on that. Uh, the way out, the real way out, is to just all in with the Lord, all in now. Mm-hmm. Okay, man. Well, I think we've we've done it today. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being hey, there. Hey, 2012. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. 2012. Who to thunk it? And. Um, Still on fire for the Lord, still on fire for the truth, still still hoping. More we, than ever. More than ever. Well, what's the choice? <laughs> there is no choice, really. You think about it. There right. is no choice. Yeah. But, but that's, you know, that's a, you get wisdom, you realize there is no choice. There's just the default position or, or rebelling against the default position, but that's really the only kind of wiggle room you have. Yeah. Default being life and, of course, re, you know, rebelling against it, meaning death. And death is no alternative because death just is the negation of life, which means that you have, you know, that's a, that's a rough way to go. The people who embrace death really negate their their whole purpose for existence in the first place, and then, then they wonder why they're so miserable. Anyway. Okay, Brother T, thank you so much, and uh, I will right. we'll be back in touch. It's brotherthomasblog.blogspot.com. Or no, Bro Thomas Blog. No, how, what is it again? Well, if you Google Brother Thomas blog, it comes up. I can't ever remember. 
remember. Brothomasblog.blogspot.com or brotherthomasblog.blogspot.com. I'll get it and I'll put it on this uh, talk. It will be at zephdaniel.com, which is uh, also uh, the Zeph Report. And um, this is the first broadcast we've done in a while. I have had to take a break. I'm just... I'm not going to bore you with re repetition. Today was not. But this kind of repetition we did today, this is kind of like an urgency based on the prophetic. It's kind of like a little more than just a repetition of what we said in 2008. No, this is a new urgency. This is a real, and the Holy Spirit is moving, so take advantage of that now. It's moving like it uh, hasn't for a while. It, there's, a, there's something going on. Let's yeah, I have a song up there just for today called Something in the Air, and uh, there's something in the air, and... I'm just exhorting everyone to put everything aside at this point and, and just get in, get all in, because you're going to need it. You're gonna, <laughs> that's the only way to get through what's coming and what we're in. Gotcha. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, uh, stay right, right there, man. man. Stay right there. Uh, thank you, Brother Thomas, uh, but stay right there, and I'll be back at you after I close this. Folks, you've heard it. You got it direct. You got it mainlined. There is no other alternative. Um, I've, st you know, anyone with any experience in this would tell you the same thing. There is no alternative. It is what it is. The truth is the truth. It doesn't change. And with that, I bid you shalom. And we'll see you next time.